To discuss the ongoing situation in Myanmar, I'm joined by my next guest, Dr. Sasa, who is a well-known philanthropist, a doctor, and a humanitarian. Uh, Dr. Sasa, thank you so much for coming on the broadcast. As I mentioned, you are a well-known uh, person in Myanmar. You've spent your life doing all kinds of humanitarian work and uh, helping those who are vulnerable and needy. But you have now just accepted the position as Myanmar's representative to the United Nations. So why did you decide to accept this position? Yeah, I have seen the suffering of the people, my people, and uh, the atrocities and um, uh, yeah, the pain uh, that was, uh, you know, purposely imposed on the people of Myanmar for so long and for so much. So I believe that uh, being in these positions, I'll be able to help the people who are in need more and ease the suffering and the pain and also injustice and all these atrocities are continuing in our, our country, unfortunately. Can you talk about uh, what you see as your main role uh, in this new position as uh, Myanmar's representative to the United Nations? I want to make sure the international community are aware that these uh, military dictatorships that this military coup is illegitimate, is illegal. And on 8th of November 2020, the people of Myanmar have chosen their representative, democratically elected member of parliament by the people, for the people of Myanmar. But it was overthrown in the middle of the night in the 1st of February. 2021. So I want to make sure that the international community recognize us, legitimate government, legitimate lawmakers, not that illegal military regime in the country that only bring the darkness and the suffering to the people of Myanmar. Uh, you have a very huge following on social media, specifically on Facebook, and uh, recently uh, you posted on Facebook asking people to send you information, video, testimony, evidence of the alleged atrocities being committed by the military junta. What have you received so far, and what can you tell us about the extent of their human rights violations? The state forces the security forces, the armed forces, who should be protecting people of Myanmar are now against the people of Myanmar, brutally. And uh, it's a very sad. They have declared the war on the people of Myanmar in a very aggressive way and terrorize the people, particularly targeting the critics. You had a chance to have a meeting uh, with the representatives of the United Nations. Uh, can you tell us what you, you told them about the situation in your country? We have collected all kind of informations of the brutality and um, the human rights abuses and the violations committed by the security forces in the last three weeks. And so it is really um, uh, for us to uh, submit all those evidence and proof uh, to United Nations Human Rights Council and also UN Security Council to build up the maximum pressures to these uh, brutal uh, military regimes. We have seen for the first time in this protest uh, that uh, thousands of uh, pro-military junta supporters are now taking to the streets of Mandalay, of Yangon. Uh, do you fear that this just escalates the situation uh, right now in your country? Well, it is funded by these same military coup leaders. Uh, they are given uh, the cash 5,000, which is some uh, $3 uh, per day, so that they can go and protest and disturb these people who are pro-democracy. And so um, it's a very evil, what they're doing is very evil. And uh, our people, they make our country poor, and they make the economy collapse. Uh, this, uh, this created a situation where all these people will be uh, collapse of healthcare and uh, you know, collapse of economy, and they have created a system 
where um, uh, all these people will be suffering into the maximum. And so now the people are having no food to eat. And, and, and again, they will get some cash and say, look, I'll give you, you know, three dollars per day. You go and do for me this. So I have got a list of everything that they've calculated, how much they pay to whom. And we have got the people who are distributing the pictures, everything, evidence that they are doing this. They are making the people of Myanmar against the people of Myanmar. So it's evil. The uh, U.S. administration under uh, President Biden has uh, slapped sanctions on various uh, uh, generals in the uh, in the military junta. Uh, do you think that the United States and Western countries should uh, also uh, slap sanctions on the various lucrative businesses that the military has across the country, from uh, SIM cards to wireless to, uh, communications to all the various uh, uh, enterprises that is raking in billions of dollars uh, for the military. Would you like uh, the U.S. Uh, to, do, uh, to do that? Yeah, I mean, uh, sanctioning and punishing the generals is not enough. It's the same. The one who supported them into this power are the same as the one who is committing this crime against humanity. So we are making the list of the company and the people associated with this regime, junta. So all those business who evolve with these military leaderships must be punished because all the, the, the bullets and the weapons that they are killing against their own people are coming from those kind of businesses. And therefore, we are now asking uh, uh, Mr. President Biden administrations to make a tougher sanctions and also British government and European Union uh, to make a bigger sanctions on the people who support them. Obviously, the military generals uh, do not recognize uh, your appointment as the uh, representative to the United Nations. Are you afraid uh, for your life? Uh, are you concerned that you might be arrested? Uh, definitely, they will do anything to harm us. Um, they have issued several notification uh, threatening us. Uh, but uh, I don't believe that uh, uh, they will be able to do what they wanted to. And then um, uh, I believe that this is a very important mission that we have to do. And I, I do not serve the evil. I do not serve uh, their purpose. I am not appointed by the, the generals, but I am appointed by the people of Myanmar. Uh, therefore, I will represent the people of Myanmar till the end. You don't hide the fact that you are a, a, a Christian uh, and you rely on your faith. Can you talk about maybe uh, some uh, Bible verses that have uh, uh, encouraged you, given you strength in the middle of this very difficult time? I accept Jesus as my Savior and my Lord. And I believe that uh, he died for me on the cross. Uh, he came from heaven to earth to, 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 to serve so that I can live. He died so that I can live. It's very simple. So I think it to summarize, uh, it's all about love. And I'm uh, encouraged and also reading First uh, Corinthians 13 uh, verses 1 to 7 about love. I mean, I, I, I'm inspired by that and also deeply touched by, uh, by that verses uh, that, um, that talk about love. Love is a kind, love is a patient, love is not boastful. All that chapter and verses is my favorite. And also I'm um, uh, really uh, encouraged and, uh, uh, you know, uh, get the energy and strength from Matthew chapter 5, verses uh, 3 to 12, where he, Jesus was talking about, blessed are those who are poor in spirit, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Uh, blessed are those who are, who are mourned, so they will be comforted. It say, blessed are those who, have, who, who are merciful, so for, the, for they will see the mercy. And uh, blessed are those who who hunger and thirst for justice, for they will be satisfied. 
They are blessed and those who are poor in heart, for they will seek God. And I, I'm really, really inspired by all those verses. And uh, I uh, believe that those are living words are so much to our life and our way. And I mean, even for our political work, I think it's very important that Jesus said, love your neighbor as you love yourself. And again, and say, even love your enemy. How would you like Christians around the world uh, to pray for your nation? I would really appreciate if the, uh, our brothers and sisters around the world uh, pray for my country in this time of troubles. This is a very difficult time for my people and country. And uh, all 54 million people in Myanmar are under siege by the evil and darknesses. And no one of the 54 million are saved right now. We all are in that fear and living under siege, uh, including our president and state councilor, Dr. Aosa Suchi. So I ask all our friends and also family and our brothers and sisters in Christ to remember uh, uh, our people and country in our prayer in 24 hours in a day uh, if you can give two minutes to pray for us, I believe that we will see the miracles that we never have seen before. And that is uh, the freedom of the people of Myanmar, and uh, the democratic society of Myanmar. There's a thriving and blessing, not only for the country, but also for the region and the whole world. But I believe that the prayer can move the mountains. So the mountain is not the mountain in geographical locations, the mountain in the hearts of the people, particularly the army. We need to remove the mountains of these evils in their hearts. But it's only by spirit, only by faith, we can remove that. So I hope and pray that if the whole world join us in a prayer at least two minutes a day, I believe that that evil mountains will be removed and that uh, there will be the kingdom come, the kingdom of love, the kingdom of hope, the kingdom of peace, and the kingdom of thriving, and his kingdom of forgiveness, his kingdom of reconciliation will come to my people and the country. Thank you so much for coming on the broadcast, and we wish you the best, and our prayers are with you and the nation of Myanmar. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. God bless. God bless.